beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son stay blessed first john 5 19 are you there some people are opening the old testament you must be joking hallelujah first john 5 verse 19 if you're there let's read together one to read and we know that we are of god and the whole world the whole world lieth in kindness brotherly affection it says the whole world lieth where? In wickedness. This is the truth that many people have refused to accept. This world we live in is surrounded by wickedness. And tonight briefly we'll examine the mystery of wickedness. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. To let us know that there is an operation of wickedness that is present in the earth and because we live here today and now and we plan to live here for a very long time it's important to understand the realities that are here and how to exempt ourselves Ephesians 6 verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against what against against the rulers of the darkness of this world finally against spiritual wickedness spiritual wickedness in high places some versions say in heavenly places the heavenlies i told you that there are many planes of heavens is that true remember our teaching the reality of what heaven and hell get the teaching I told us that there are many dimensions in the realm of the spirit many when you say the heavenlies you're not necessarily talking about the heaven of heavens where god dwells or the third heaven there are many planes in the spirit and the bible generally calls it heavens are you getting my point and i told us that this is where some people have gone to and come back and say they went to heaven they went to astral realms they went to different kinds of realms hallelujah the bible says that there are entities that are called spiritual wickedness it's even a name spiritual wickedness and they dwell in the heavenlies they operate from that plane hallelujah so the whole world lieth in wickedness how come we are not taught that this world we live in from the moment you are born you are born into a system that is fabricated and doggedly into wickedness. And until you exit this realm, you are going to live with the reality of this predicament. 
So, knowing how to exempt yourself and your loved ones and exempt all that are around you is the reason why we are taking this topic. Are you getting my point? You are not going to stop the world from being wicked. Are you getting my point? Because the Bible calls Satan the God of this world. The God of this system. The one who fashioned a system that does not honor the values of the kingdom. Someday, every knee will bow experientially. Is that true? And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. But as at now, we do not yet see all things. Remember our teaching last week? We do not yet see all things. That's the reason why there are a brother who was saying arm robbers came and wanted to injure him. Think about it. Why will somebody sit down in the night? While you woke up in the morning, he was thinking, I'm going to wound somebody this night. How can a man think this is his goal for the day? I must wound somebody this night. It's called the mystery of wickedness. How many of you say, oh, why are they treating us bad? Who did I offend in my village that they want to stop me from marrying? Welcome to the reality of this world. You, you don't, Dr. Paul and Encher says, this, this, the earth realm is not a playing ground. He said it's a battlefield. Whether you believe it or not, as you grow, the realities that will confront you will make you to reconsider whether it is a joke or it is true. That wickedness is real. Many preachers, listen to me, many preachers in a bid to magnify God and demagnify Satan have, while that is a good intention, they have lied to people. Are you getting me? Lied to people that uh, there is the concept of wickedness. It does not exist. Please get this once and for all. Wickedness is real. Are you getting me? Somebody just gets up and looks at you and says, Benga, I don't like you. Why? I, I choose to hate you. And my life's goal is to prove to you that I hate you. You buy a nice car and take it home. Somebody just begins to frown. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Car. How old is this boy? 25, 25. I was 40 when I bought a bicycle. And because of that, listen, listen, listen. Many of us grew up in the cities. We grew up around. We watched all kinds of, of, of deceitful films that have covered us from the reality of the fact that wickedness is real. A number of us here are not working. But for those who are working, you know that when you get a job, for one single space of promotion, there may be a number of people. And everybody is eyeing every other person. Is that true? The day your director calls you, they call you and say, so what did he say? The next day you come back and your director says, don't be stupid. Me, I spoke to you. Something happened somewhere that you are not aware of. But you are paying a bitter price. Those who understand that wickedness is real and have equipped themselves with the revelation and the spiritual arsenals will keep soaring as if Satan does not exist. And they will leave others crying and languishing. There are many of our loved ones who don't go home. Some of you have not even gone home since you were born. Because they told you one scary story. They say nobody goes there and comes back the same. Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare. Occultism is real. Witchcraft is real. Yokes are real. Bondages are real. Even Jesus said he was sent to deliver those who have been locked up in prison. They didn't see the prison physically, but they are in prison. Moving, but in prison. Hallelujah. This is what is affecting a lot of families. A lot of families. And I prophesy to you that in the name that is above all names, as we are teaching, just as the teaching is going on, many of you will suddenly find out that liberty, you are just liberated from this nonsense that the devil wants to tie you with. The strength of evil 
is ignorance. The strength of evil is ignorance. That's the highest weapon Satan uses against the people of God. Ignorance. The Bible says in Psalm 82, it said, They know not, neither do they understand. They know not. And then a few of us have gone a step further to know the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And it's not producing any result at all. So we are going to be examining these things. Praise the Lord. So wickedness is real. What is the goal of wickedness? Why wickedness? What is the goal of the evil that we see in our society? What does Satan want to achieve with arm robbers and terrorists and wicked people in the villages and around witches and wizards, necromancers, people who try to project wickedness to people's lives? What is the goal? We must know where Satan is going. Why is he doing this? Hallelujah. What is the whole idea behind the, set, the, the devil trying to turn the heart of your father against you or your mother against you or your loved ones or your employer or your boss or your pastor, whatever? Why does Satan enjoy wickedness? What does it do to him? Hallelujah. Wickedness or evil generally is brought to attempt to achieve three things. Number one, to discredit God. To discredit God in your life. To discredit God. If there is anything Satan is obsessed about, is bringing you to a point where the credibility of God drops to zero in your life. How many of you have heard people say, I used to trust God, but right now, I trust anything that works. God or others. Have you heard people speak like that? They say, I remember, I trusted God. From 17 years till 40 years. God didn't bring a husband. Right now, I trust any other thing. Whether a stick, a candle, fire, once it produces result, I trust it. That's exactly the goal of wickedness. When armed robbers attack you and you are shouting Jesus, Jesus and they still injure you and they wound you. When certain things happen, they attempt to discredit God. Discredit the word. Never forget this. The mystery of wickedness was put in place by Satan. First in an attempt to prove that God is not as great as we claim he is. So, when a man has been victimized so much, that, that, that pain becomes a stronghold in his mind. How many of you have seen people that when you are praying, their eyes are even open, they are just looking at you, saying, in Jesus' name, amen. While you are praying, they feel like slapping you. Once you just round up the prayer, they just move. You know they didn't believe this at all. The mystery of wickedness at work in their life. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? When you tell your parents, oh, I'm attending Koinonia, God is doing great things, and then the devil orchestrates something terrible to happen. Are you getting me? Your father has an accident or something like that, and he returns back and you say, Daddy, I just wanted you to know that I dropped your name in the prayer request. He will give you a dirty slap and say, you and all the liars, and every man of God is a liar. The mystery of wickedness. Number one, to discredit God. Do you not see that that was exactly what Lucifer tried to do in the Garden of Eden? He came and met Eve. Read his conversation with Eve. He said, did God really say if you eat of this fruit, you will die? Now, you know that he used half truth, right? He was not, he just patched it up. He said, but do you know that there is a story you do not know? And that's why, that's what you will know when you eat of this fruit. And truly, when they ate of the tree, the eye, their eyes were open and they began to have a sense of the knowledge of good and evil. So number one, to discredit God. 
Number two. Number two. To weaken and possibly destroy your faith in God. To weaken and destroy your faith in God. The Bible says, be not weak in faith. Speaking about Abraham now. Be not weak in faith. The Bible says, he considered not. So, wickedness is orchestrated by Satan. Listen, please. Wickedness is orchestrated by Satan to weaken your faith. When you really see wickedness, you will need to trust God to stand. That's what philosophers are using. Why can a loving God allow children to be dying in Sudan? Is that not what people say? How can a loving God allow this and that to happen? And it weakens your faith. This is why Jesus says, if the Son of Man returns, will he find faith in the earth? Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? Especially for many of us who have been taught that when things go wrong in your life, it's a sign that something is wrong with you. It's a sign that something is wrong. Satan capitalizes on the inconsistency of that message. And when anything happens, you just believe that this trust you've been having in God. This is why Job said, though he slay me, Satan, you won't achieve what you are trying to achieve. Though he slay Are you seeing now? Job's wife came to a point where she was tired. She said, Job, Mio, I don't think God is faithful again. Curse God and die. When your wife tells you to curse God and die, that's a level of discouragement because she's supposed to be the last person that will stand by you. Are you getting my point now? So to discredit God, to discredit God, number two, to weaken or totally destroy your faith. Number three, what's the goal of the mystery of wickedness? To perpetuate, listen please, very important, to, I'm thinking of the best way to put it, to, to become a channel through which the program and the evil agenda of Satan for nations will continue. Let me explain what I mean. How many of you have heard that word covenant? Why will the devil want our forefathers huh, to go and bow to him and enter a covenant on behalf of people yet unborn? What, what, is, what is his passion about people that are not born yet? Are you getting what I'm, I'm trying to explain now? Because Satan is trying to secure a channel through which he can pass a transgenerational channel. Do you understand what I'm teaching you now? Are you getting my point? So although it will take 30 or 50 or 100 years for this generation to be born, Satan will say, you, since you are representing them, and I'm going to explain this to you. I will explain to you, I hope, if I can remember, the mystery of reproduction. And you understand that reproduction is not just about sex and giving birth. The Bible says by one man, not one woman, sin was transferred. Are you getting me? By one man, through the blood. Praise the Lord. So, he now enters a covenant and says, alright, in this family, we will worship you, give us children. We will worship you, give us protection. Deal. Is that true? Now he can go and give birth to 30 children, no CS with his wife. No CS, no hospital. But there will not be any complication because a pact had been entered. Are you getting my point? Fast forward two or three generations, somebody comes up and says, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm not going to involve myself with all of these things. Because, you see, I'm going to talk about the mystery of blood. Blood does not have time. It speaks. It will raise an alert in the realm of the spirit. Something is being compromised here. And the next thing that will happen is that these people, because they are trying to breach a contract. Are you getting me? 
So it will activate the mystery of wickedness. The devil will now come to say, who is trying to stop this? And if you have authority enough, you will be the one who will break that cycle and enact a new one. Are you getting me? And if you do not sustain enough knowledge, you will die. And then the devil will say, this is a, an example of what I can do with anybody who plays with me. And the other person will say, I'm willing. Are you getting my point now? I don't know how you are going to write the third point, but that's what I, that's what the third point is. Praise the Lord to become a channel through which transgenerational wickedness will be perpetuated. God bless you, sir. The mystery of wickedness. Look up. How many of you know that if there are no human beings in the earth, wickedness will be unfruitful. It won't yield any result. Is that true? When you understand this, you will know that wickedness will not cease. In fact, the Bible says it this way. The Bible says, um, how did he put it now? It says, ah, end time, Matthew 24, how did he put it? How that people will be offended, is that true? paraphrasing like wickedness will increase the imaginations that are in the hearts of men will increase look at me those who are praying listen and i want you to get this those who want to solve their family problems by just saying in the name of jesus christ wickedness will not happen to me when I finish with you, you will know that there are certain things that if you do not do, that prayer is incomplete. Because there is already a seed, like a gene. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you believe what I'm teaching? I know this is wrestling a lot of our theology. Oh, I'm in Christ. Calm down. We're, 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 we're heading somewhere. Because many of us have been cheated. Oh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. I will show you that your personal salvation does not change your territory. Are you getting my point? That I am born again does not automatically make my mother, brother, sister, and father born again. If that were the case, everybody would just kneel down on behalf of their clan and just accept Jesus once and for all and let's rest from this nonsense. Hallelujah. Is that true? So wickedness is real. And the goal is to discredit God. To weaken your faith. Every single arsenal that Satan launches at the believer is aimed at discrediting the faithfulness of God. Because he has a name and he is called faithful and true. That means he does not lie. That means he cannot lie. That means he is ever his 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 um ever faithful through all generations but when things begin to happen in your life that negate what the word of god is saying that's satan attempting to discredit god in your life say amen the mystery of wickedness wickedness is real brothers and sisters this operation is working in our government this operation is working in our families look at me look at me how many of you have heard the stories of parents who will put something in hot iron and carry it and press it on their children is that called discipline that is the mystery of wickedness hallelujah or a mother look at her own daughter and say i curse you you won't marry, you won't move forward. This is a, it's a spirit. It's not just an attitude. Are you getting what I'm saying, please? And if we do not understand this and deal with this, it will limit us in a very mighty way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for opening our eyes. So the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world, your village, your house, the job you are trying to look for, that office is in the midst of wickedness you may be born again 
But are your fellow employees born again? Hallelujah. And you are going to have to live with them. You do business with wicked people. You go to buy rice and buy gari from somebody who went to a herbalist. You bought it, you ate. Is that true? So you're not going to say, me, I'll only work with Christians. Uh -uh. It's impossible. You live in a world where everyone is permitted to believe what he wants to believe. And because of our interrelations, you must find yourself relating with people. So you must know how to keep Satan where he belongs. Praise the Lord. Are you following me so far? Hallelujah. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the realms and jurisdiction, the boundaries of demonic operation. I won't stay too long in this aspect because I guess that this is the part that has brought fear and confusion and this is one of the most unscriptural areas of spiritual warfare in terms of its explanation. This is where you have people um, write accounts in an attempt to show us the structure and the organogram. Are you following me now? I know that there are many books, hundreds and probably thousands and even millions on books of books on spiritual warfare, deliverance, and so on and so forth. And there are many opinions. Are you getting me? The Bible tells us something very interesting. It said, do not be ignorant of the devices. I told you the word devices is the word stratomai. His strategies. So, we are just concerned about his strategies. We are not necessarily concerned about the kingdom and what the organogram of the satanic kingdom is. Are you getting my point? I personally believe that an extensive study into the organogram and the structure of Satan is not really necessary. Especially in light of the fact that we know that in Christ he has been defeated. Are you following what I'm saying? So I'm just guiding us just to bring awareness. There are many books and I've read some of them. You have read some of them. Hallelujah. They begin to tell you all kinds of things. They list physical territories in the earth where there are headquarters of demonic activities and so on and so forth now i'm not i do not have enough authority to dispute the things that are being written are you getting my point especially for those that do not compromise the written word of god some of these things were written by people who allegedly said they were part of the demonic kingdom and for some of them they were deep into occultism there are lots of books, Occult Grandmaster, Now in Christ. There are books by Rebecca Brown, Mary Baxter, um, Dr. Olukoya, who is considered to be an authority in the subject of deliverance and spiritual warfare. There are a lot of others, you know, different brothers, prophets, people, and so on and so forth who have written books. Others went to heaven, others went to hell, others died and came back, others just studied the Bible. So we have this extensive um, description, level 111, level 999, level 666, level, you know, this and that and that. And for many people we have, rather than concentrating on the strategies, the methods of Satan and understanding our victory, we have paid attention trying to study and research on the organization of the demonic kingdom let me tell you something if you do that the danger is that everything will suddenly become demonic around you have you seen people like that why are you looking at me like this they just say kai this lady you are because of something they read they say okay in our kingdom when we want to seduce a man we look at him like this so a lady is quietly she's even feeling sleepy and just looking at you just say kai in jesus name don't blood of jesus we are putting sign of the cross so we don't want to see this kind of immaturity in the body of christ that's why there must be a balance are you following me there are people who don't wear black on friday or on sunday because they read a book and he said every time you wear black on friday notice check left you will see a star that's a sign that we are coming out you know and all kinds of sects come up with now I hope you understand that I'm not condemning anybody. You get my point? I'm only trying to explain to you that it is 
quite counterproductive to spend all of our time and energy trying to understand the entire organization. Listen, how many CEOs maintain the same structures? They change. So that you were delivered from occult in 1980 does not mean the organogram that used to exist still exists. It is logical for any leader to be dynamic. Are you getting my point? So when you come and say, okay, there is a demon. His name is Luke. He's the one in charge of Zaria. He's the one appointed to stop Koinonia. His name is Luke. What if Luke... What? <laughs> what, what if Luke was promoted or demoted and they now brought another person and you are still advocating and you say, Luke... I'm speaking to you now. You are hearing my voice. Look, he's somewhere Say me. I'm not even in Nigeria again. And now you're shouting. You see, there is a lot of spiritual ignorance. A lot of it. And most of this has come because we have uh, not necessarily gone out of scripture, but taken other materials and used them as the ultimate template to help us understand the realm of the spirit. I think sufficient enough is the information the Bible gave us about Satan. I believe it is sufficient enough. Praise God. You get my point? If you were in the occult before and you were delivered and you wrote a book, please don't feel sad. If you wrote prayer point that your book should increase, it will increase. We prayed for you. Hallelujah. But at the same time, don't go about sitting down teaching people and saying, okay, in the realm of the spirit... Red means danger. White means this. Yellow means this. So don't wear yellow shirts. If you really mean business with prosperity, keep yellow shirts aside. This is part of the teaching that has moved from church to church and place to place. So we have brought religiosity and a lot of forms of religion in an attempt to keep Satan. There is nowhere in scripture, listen, or you say, ah, don't take products from Procter & Gamble. They are Freemason and all of that. What do they make? How many of you have used their inhaler? You force it in your nose and you... And did you go to hell? Did demons come to disturb you? You see, I'm saying this thing because we are touching on this topic and I'm trying to clear the air. There are many of you who say, I know somebody is a bad person. He sells meat. Me, I know this guy goes to the Habalis. Who won't eat his meat? Question. The one you have been eating before, who told you that that meat was not taken to a Habalis? Are you getting my point? Rather than allowing fear put religious rules, why don't you rise up in Revelation and realize that the Bible says a thousand shall come by your side. Only God knows how many poisons I've eaten in my life. Because the Bible says when they serve you, just give thanks and eat. Hallelujah. Many of us don't eat certain people's food. Just say, this lady is always frowning. I won't eat her food though. I don't know what I've entered right now. And then many of us, listen, I have had other teachings. Aha, let me even talk about it. I've had other teachings that say somebody can come to you. Come. He can just come and hug you and he has initiated you. Listen, let me balance something very quick. It, it, was that how you got born again? You think, listen, I want you to understand that the will of man is a powerful force. Even Jesus stood at the door of the heart and was knocking until man agreed to open. Are you getting my point? If you are not in Christ or you are ignorant of the principles of the kingdom, it is possible. Are you getting my point? But to now come and say, oh, because I'm just sitting down and you came to put with one on my head, suddenly I've been initiated, except you don't carry fire. The witch doctor together with his fire, it will burn into ashes there. There was a time people were complaining that a particular woman in Joss, she was doing some kinds of funny things and then getting power to make people come and eat her food. You know how many people ate that food? 
When they told me the restaurant, I laughed. I said, oh Lord, I don't know whether I've eaten here or not, but it cannot have power over me. Unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift, lift up, up my, my soul. soul. Oh my, oh my God. God. I, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. I pity the person that will go to a coven and call my name. That's the last time you have the opportunity to shout it. Believe me. See, I'm rushing myself because let me see if we can get to weapons of victory. Except you don't know the spiritual arsenals you carry. Let me tell you, Satan can bow. This is the sweetest part of this gist. That's why I want to rush all these things so that we'll get there. Say after me, Satan can bow. I hate the way Satan has been so magnified. There are many people who teach, they say, do you know that these classes of demons are so powerful? Not even you can stand them. There are people who believe that. I don't believe that. Absolutely. I don't believe it. The Bible says, God gave him a name that is above every other name. He said at the mention of that name, every knee, not some, every knee must bow. Hallelujah. Let's rush. So, jurisdiction, number one. Number one. The realm of the spirit. Territories of operation. Or realms of operation. Number one. The Bible says that they operate in heavenly places. So, that is a realm of demonic operation. Please write quickly. Can you put strings? I'll put it on door. Hallelujah. Wickedness. Now, these are the territories that exert it upon government. Remember that the Bible says, there's no time to show you this. The Bible says when Daniel was praying, remember the story? The Bible says that principality that was operating over the territory of Persia, the prince of Persia, which stood the prayers of Daniel. Is that true? When Gabriel was going to bring him the answer, he said, when, he, when Gabriel arrived, he said, from the very first day that you set yourself to pray, your prayers were heard, okay? And while he was coming, the prince of that territory. So there are powers that station themselves across territories. That's why you can see that certain geographical territories exhibit similarities of certain character. Is that true? You find out that certain people, certain territories, the men are irresponsible. Certain territories, you know, they, they, are, they are given to anger. Certain territories, they are given to irresponsibility and all kinds of things. You find out that it's a common trait because of this operations of darkness in the heavenlies second is the air please take notes this is very important notice that it is the features that the holy spirit uses to manifest himself that satan also operates there the air the bible talks of the prince of the power of the air these spiritual forces of wickedness are the ones who manipulate and control people because the media is through the power of the air. Are you getting my point now? They are, they are the ones who initiate mind control systems. And this is probably one of the most disastrous manifestations of darkness. Deception and ignorance. Are you learning something now? So the air, the prince of the power of the air second scriptural proof that the air is one jurisdiction of operation remember when jesus was going to meet the madman in gadara what happened the bible says suddenly the winds and the waves became boisterous but jesus looked and he knew that this was not just about wind this was not just about the storm look at the tsunami that happens is it not wind wind these are spirits it's just that we cannot see it with our optical eyes. 
There are spirits. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? So the air. Number three, water. Water. This is very important. This is where we talk about the marine world or marine spirits. This is the jurisdiction of darkness that is responsible for prosperity, for lust, for seduction, and all kinds of perversion. Every kind of immoral perversion is associated with this dimension of demonic operation. Water. Very important. Are you learning something tonight? Water. And this one is very important. That's why you find out that territories that are covered around the river Rhine areas exhibit attitudes of lust. Are you getting me? Lost on faithfulness in marriage and all kinds of... You see it rampant. Are you getting my point? This is spiritual intelligence. I will give you sufficient to the point that you need that I believe you can research more. But I think that explaining to you what I'm explaining to you is giving you intelligence. So that when you are talking with people, it's like a doctor diagnosing a patient. With this spiritual intelligence, you will understand. You will know how to act. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There was a time, I remember at the Bar Beach, it was, it was a popular issue that uh, I think a particular bank or organization built a glass house. Is that true? They built a glass house and the witches and wizards around the marine, they wrote a letter to them. They said, you better do something about those buildings before we scatter it. You are interrupting us. Water. Very important. Very important. Job began to talk of the deep sea creatures. He called it Leviathan. The deep sea creatures that arise from the water. You read the book of Revelations and it tells you, you see the interaction of water and all of these things. So I've told you the realm of the spirit, the air, the atmosphere. Kabosha. The water. This water one is very serious. Do you know something? I will show you from scripture something that may surprise you. Do you know everything you see in existence, the animals and the rest, do you know they came out of water? They came out of water. Genesis. Let me show you very quickly. There's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army the rising up they'll break every chain break every chain break every chain Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Shiba la bakura tu sepeli shiba la dama. Help me search for it. Genesis two. Verse what? 21 yeah beautiful thank you good bible students verse 20 and 21 genesis 1 are you there i just want to show you that the water is a very mysterious object and god said let the waters do what Bring forth abundantly. So there is a mystery of abundance and water. Are you understanding me? Is it in your Bible? It said, let the waters bring forth abundantly. Mm. The moving creature that have life. Where did they come out from? He said, and the fowl that may fly. Even the fowl came out of the water. It's in your Bible. Above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. Verse 21. And God created great sea monsters. And every living creature that moveth. 
which the waters poured forth abundantly. Are you seeing now? Is it in your Bible? The water. Very, very important. This is why Satan associates himself a lot and there are many demonic, diabolic things that happen with water. Hallelujah. The next medium of manifestation is fire. Notice that these are the same expressions of the spirit. Fire. Almost everyone here, or most of our villages have festivals. There is no festival without fire. How many of you have seen diabolic people put fire and keep putting it around them? What are they trying to achieve? It is a realm of operation of demonic substances. See, let me tell you something. Fire is a big mystery. Big mystery. You can't hold it. It doesn't fear anything, but it consumes everything that come ar comes around it. Hallelujah. Fire. Very important. Even the world will be judged with fire. The first judgment was with water. The second judgment will be with fire. Hallelujah. Number what now? Four? Number what? Five. I'm going to give it to you now. The fifth one is the earth. Dust. Earth. Adam. Hmm. Look at me. How many of you have seen people in your village get angry and they carried sand and spoke to it and dropped it back? Or like the Igbo people do, when they take small drink, they pour small on the ground and say to our ancestors, <laughs> hmm. what is it about the earth? The prophet looked and said, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. That means the earth is not non-living like we teach in biology. It was in the days of Moses, the Bible says the people rebelled against God and the earth opened its mouth it has mouth. It swallowed them. Till tomorrow we cannot find them. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? These are jurisdictions of operation. That's why priests and the rest put their shrines on the ground and then they sit down. Even if you give them one million, they won't go and build a luxurious house. That earth, they must associate themselves with the earth. Hallelujah. These levels, this medium, these realms of operation. Every manifestation, every single medium of manifestation. Let me give you one more. Are you ready? Human beings, human vessels. As far as Satan is concerned, this is the best medium. Of manifestation why because every other thing i've listed does not have a will they don't have willpower as it were are you getting me and they don't have souls only human beings have souls please are you learning something so satan entered the madman remember the madman in gadara do you know that the entire spirits across those territories, they were resident in that man. He stayed in caves. He was alone. He caught himself. But the moment Jesus was coming, without any publicity, he came out and went to wait close to the water and was waiting for Jesus to arrive. Immediately Jesus arrived, he began to talk to him. He said, we know who you are. Have you come to destroy us before our time? What time? What time did Satan teach them? Let me tell you something about the powers of darkness that you must understand. When they say their time has not come, what that means is this. Listen, you cannot cease their operation from the earth, but you can cease their operation from your territory. Are you getting this? Please understand this. That's why we can't all sit down right now and say, Satan leave the whole world go to venus or mass 
relocate there after all is empty go and build a new kingdom leave us in peace so says the apostles and the prophets no you can't do that what you can do even jesus while he was on earth he didn't cast satan out of everywhere wherever he met with him he told him mr man go listen jesus himself answered one request of demons they said please cast us to the pigs what did he say in other words he knew that as far as exiting this realm is concerned they are not going to leave what we can do are you getting my point so that there are certain prayers we will stop praying at once are you getting my point many people pray and what they mean by their prayer is to tell the devil bye bye pack your load and go let me not see you and don't even go have you had that prayer i cast you into gehenna have you had that kind of prayer don't come out again uh is that really an accurate prayer no no don't feel bad believe me with the kind of prayerful people on earth if that prayer were answerable by now there would have been some clear air that shows that sufficient demons have gone down to gehenna gehenna is called the place of the dead are you getting my point listen he said resist the devil there are people that pray all kinds of prayers oh we cast you and we lock you up across a forest just stay there those kinds of prayers are not accurate prayers please please listen don't be offended if you are used to praying those kinds of prayer but i want you to know that we cannot cast satan and demons out of the earth we can only secure our territory are you getting my point because the bible says satan is like a roaring lion he's like that he moves to and fro praise the lord Say, I'm learning something. Water, wind, the atmosphere. I just want you to know that these are operations of darkness. Every time a native doctor or a herbalist wants to do certain things, one or more of these elements must be in place. Yet, these are the same elements that the Holy Spirit associates himself with. What does that tell you? Discrediting God. You see that? Thank you, Jesus. Let's touch on weapons of victory. I'll just use one and then we'll stop. Where? What's the time? Oh, there's time. Praise God. Don't look at the time. Look at me. The clock is not preaching to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, before we talk of the weapons of victory, let me just speak very quickly on the strategies of Satan. The strategies. The strategies. This is, I think this is the one that is very important. Strategies. There are three main strategies from scripture. They will not change. This is the one you can bank on. They will not change. Do not be ignorant of the devil's stratomai, his strategy, his way of doing things. It can come in different forms, but it is one of these three. Number one, I shared it last week, ignorance. 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 Second Corinthians 4 verse 4. Ignorance. Are you there? Okay, I thought it was projected. Let me turn there. Second Corinthians 4 verse 4. In whom the God of this world. Okay. Second Corinthians 4. Not Chronicles. Sorry. Second Corinthians. No problem let's continue in whom the god of this world or this age the word age there is aeon in whom the god of this system 
the thinking pattern of this system has blinded the minds of them who believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine upon them is that in your Bible it says Satan did what blinded their minds everybody say ignorance the number one and hear me as sophisticated as Satan looks his greatest strategy is to maintain ignorance in the lives of believers or across territory say ignorance notice every manifestation of wickedness in the earth realm has been strengthened by the ignorance of the people because the moment they know they will revolt until victory comes every bad government in the world has been able to execute its agenda by enforcing ignorance are you getting that that's the spirit of the power of darkness say ignorance ignorance now come any other guy again come i need two gentlemen stand here stand here i want to explain something stand here stand here now please everybody look at me i want you to understand this and i pray you get this revelation in jesus name there are two sides to the understanding of the kingdom please don't forget there are what two sides the first is understanding the person of jesus christ the person of jesus christ the second is the principles of jesus christ and that's what we call the principles of the kingdom is that true are you following me please so the person of jesus christ when you come under the lordship of jesus christ when you surrender to jesus christ you have embraced his person but that does not automatically mean that you have knowledge of the principles of the kingdom are you getting my point the person of jesus christ secures your eternal destiny and secures your peace the principles of jesus christ secure your victory in this earth realm so there are many well-meaning believers who know the person of jesus christ in terms of their loyalty to him but they lack sufficient understanding of kingdom principles are you getting my point for instance there are many well-meaning christians who are poor and broke and they may remain like that forever and they believe that just by being close to jesus christ automatically prosperity comes no there there is a kingdom principle that governs it is that true there are many people although they are close to god many people hate them because the kingdom principle for access is honor are you getting my point now so whether you are a christian or not when you dishonor people you will never have access are you getting my point so there is ignorance what satan tries to do is to take this first level of ignorance to stop you from seeing the light of the gospel to come to jesus christ in the first place but if he does not succeed and by any means you surrender your heart to jesus christ this becomes the second phase of the ignorance he stops you are you getting my point now so there are many well-meaning christians who the devil has lost it on them as far as the person of jesus is concerned but he has shielded them from understanding the principles of the kingdom that's why when somebody gets born again the next mission is to subject him under a radical teaching ministry where the principles of the kingdom will be taught and then he will understand this is what spiritual growth is about growing in intimacy this is why we call koinonia intimacy and partnership intimacy is our knowledge as we progress deeper to know god partnership is our working with the word and with the spirit are you getting my point now do you understand this this explanation i've given you because the greatest tool that satan uses his number one strategy is what ignorance so an unbeliever comes how many of you have seen a lot of unbelievers who understand bible verses they understand a lot of bible verses you say something they ask you they say okay let's turn to the book of matthew i have this and that and the next thing they will not accept the simplicity of the gospel 
Are you getting me to surrender to Jesus Christ? Then, when they eventually surrender, the devil makes them feel that there is nothing more in the kingdom. So, they remain in church and they think remaining in church is equal to spiritual growth. So, eventually they tell you, I've been here 20 years. And based on that, there is nothing you will tell me. Ignorance of the principles. Are you getting my point? This is the deliverance that is happening to some of you right now. Because you are born again. But you don't know why things are not moving the way the word says should be. Could it be that you do not yet have the comprehension? Paul himself prayed in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17. To the efficient church who were already born again. He said for this cause I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The father of glory that he may grant unto you the spirit of what wisdom and understanding or revelation the eyes of your understanding being enlightened flooded with light that ye may know so the bible tells us that according as his divine power has given us what all things but those all things are encapsulated in knowledge when you have access to the principles, the door opens up to you at once. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. What is possible for me, although we are all equal in Christ, but our comprehension of kingdom principles have created the divide. So I can speak to a demon spirit and say, go, and he will go. Not because my born again is greater than your own, but my, I have a greater comprehension. Two students in the same class, taught by the same teacher. One gets 100, one gets 50. Are you seeing that now? It is the degree of their comprehension. It is because of that that some will be a 30-fold, some will be a 60-fold, and some will bear what? They all produced. But according, the Bible says those who were on good soil were the ones who had and understood. But the difference was their degree of understanding. Are you following me now? Say the person of Jesus. Say the principles of Jesus. Say the person of Jesus. Say the principles of the kingdom. The question I want to ask you is, how many principles of the kingdom do you know? This is the measure. See, listen. Listen, this is very important. Healing, for instance. Healing comes from the body of Jesus by his stripes we are healed are you seeing that favor does not just happen automatically so when you understand the laws of the spirit then you will know how to navigate through life so whenever you you see a roadblock you go back and search out diligently what kingdom principle is responsible for the result you are looking for because if God did it, then it is possible. It is only the light that will open the door. So arise and shine. Not because you want to arise. Your light, access. When that revelation comes and you understand it, the door is opened at once. If you understand what I'm teaching right now, it's automatic. You don't need to pray about it. That's why, see, the Bible says while Jesus was teaching, the power of God was moving around, waiting for those who will understand and believe so that at once it will be activated. While Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell on them because they understood and they believed immediately. Are you getting the point now? So when the word of God returns to him, it's because he did not find a believer. Praise the Lord. Are you getting me? Bless you. Bless you. Weapons of victory. Let me just take one. The name of Jesus. Hmm. I will share a revelation about the name. There are many weapons of victory. Maybe let me just run to a few of them. The name of Jesus. The mystery of the blood of Jesus. Listen. The power of praise. The power of a seed. I'm going to teach you the weapon, spiritual arsenals that will lock the hands of Satan at once. The power of prayer. Hallelujah. The power of unity. 
the power of love all of these are dangerous spiritual weapons that will keep satan where he belongs is this teaching benefiting you are you getting something so i'll just take on one of them the power of the name of jesus we'll sing that song there is power hallelujah rise up on your feet we'll sing that song one more time to the shame of the devil and then we'll just pray just pray in tongues for a minute or two and then you sit down i'm about to give you a revelation that will set you on fire Shabakata labaka presekete baladadada. Shem breda baladadada. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. To break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing it one more time. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Can you stretch in tongues for just one minute? Zakata bakata preketa. Mabrosote kata balada bakata. Shapata la bakata broske balada bakata. Shapata. Ipa pa pa pre. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power. There is power. There is power. In the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power. There is power. In the name of Jesus. There is power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Take your Bibles. Let me have your attention. Lord, let our eyes be open. Show us something powerful. Let me tell you something. There are many of you, if you catch this revelation tonight, you will be amazed. This name will work for you. Years ago, I called this name, oh, nothing happened. I shouted Jesus. I said it like a special number. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Open our eyes, oh God. I show you a mystery right now. Mark 16. Break every chain. There are some chains that need to be broken. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Verse 15. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Take my value system to every creature. He said, he that believe and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believe, believe not shall be damned. 17, if you are a believer, please read it. One, to read, is projected. Stop. Stop. This sign shall follow them that believe. They will do certain things when they have a revelation of my name. He said, in my name, they will do what? It tells you all the things that can be possible in the name. In my name, they shall, number one, number two, number three.
they shall take up what? Hold on. What is the meaning of that? What is they shall take up serpents? What is the meaning of they shall take up serpents? I will soon explain it to you. Because Jesus told Moses, I mean God told Moses, remember, he said, take the serpent from the tail. I will show you what that means. They shall take up serpents. It doesn't just mean carry a physical snake. Remember at the burning bush, when Moses met with God, I, you remember, are you getting my point? He threw the rod. Is that not true? And he told him to take it, to hold it by the tail. Is it not in your Bible? I will show you what that means, to take up serpents. It's a revelation. It's a revelation. I will show you a scripture that says the horn in a man's body is on his hands. A horn is a symbol of power. Are you getting my point? So he said, with that horn, you will take up serpents. It's a mystery. I will explain. He said, in my name, that will happen. He said, and if they drink any deadly thing, that means if they move in my name, no poison will harm them. So long as it is in my name. He said, they shall lay hands. I will show you the mystery of the laying on of hands. It's not just about touching people. The horn in a man's body is his hands. The apostle said that you will stretch forth your mighty hands. The right hand of God, the Bible says, is the hand of power. Not his right leg. He said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Listen, I want to explain to you the mystery of a name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, if I call you, come. Benga. The first revelation of the name of a man is it invites his presence. When you invoke the name of a man, his presence is encapsulated in his name. Are you seeing this? I called his name and what happened? His presence showed up. So the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming their words with signs. It happened because a personality was answering to his name. So they went in the name. This is what it means to come in the name of the Lord. To come with the backing, the presence of God. Weapons of victory that can kick any satanic arsenal out of your life. Hallelujah. Watch this. I called his name. And he confirmed that that name is true. The name of a man is his identity. Every time, see, listen, listen. That's why when God met certain people, he changed their names. Because the name of a man represents the prophecy of his life. It represents his ability. It represents the prophecy upon his life. When he met Jacob, he said, no, you are not a cheat and a supplanter. As a prince with God, you have fought and prevailed. I changed your name to Israel. And the prophecy started following him. The mother of Jabez bore him in sorrow. And all through his life, the name was following him. Name follows people. A name is a spirit. It's a presence. And Jabez said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Change my name. Hallelujah. Are you getting the revelation now? So the first revelation is that the name of Jesus compels his presence to show up in that scene. Listen. Now you understand what Paul was saying. Say not in your heart who will ascend to heaven and bring God or who will go to the deep. He said, but the word is near you, even in your mouth. That means when it is uttered with revelation, the presence shows up. No time, no distance. Are you getting my point? This is a very, very powerful revelation. Very powerful revelation. You must believe this. Let me demonstrate something. Take this, hold it. This is ordinary handkerchief. Who brought this handkerchief? Are you seeing this? This is an ordinary handkerchief. He's holding it, right? Give it back to me. Watch the power of the name. This is not just for jamboree. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Hold this. Hold it. What is the difference? He just held this. Is it not so? He held this. He held this. You see the power of God there breaking out again. 
See, this is a revelation. This is why saying in Jesus' name is not what will bring the miracle. There is a revelation. This is what I want you to know. It will rattle from the realm of the spirit and it will affect you in this realm. This is a handkerchief he held. That's why I did it in your presence. It's the name. Say not in your heart. Who will go and bring him from heaven? He is closer to you. This is what koinonia is about. The reality of a personality that can be demonstrated here and now. Paul said we do not teach cunningly devised fables. These are not just stories that cannot be proven. Unbelief. So you can be, listen, you can say Jesus, Jesus, nothing will happen. The next thing I want you to know is what is really this name? Let's examine it. What is the name? We have said what the name can do, but what is the name? Look up, please. I want to shock you. Listen, the name is not Jesus. You see where people have been missing it? This is a hospital. There's surgery going on right now. The name is not Jesus. He said, in my name. He didn't write the name there. He just said, if you can find what that name is. What is the name? The name is not J-E-S-U-S. Listen. The Bible says, Isaiah speaking. He said, you shall bear a son. They shall call him what? Emmanuel. Did they ever call Jesus Emmanuel? But the prophet said, that will be his name. The name was a revelation that God is with us. Is that true? He said they shall call him Emmanuel. Nobody ever called Jesus Emmanuel. Jesus was a name that was given to him in the earth realm. There are Mexicans that bear Jesus today. In fact, in Hebrew tongue and Aramaic, it's not Jesus. It's Jesus. That's what they call it. So it's not in the pronunciation. It's not in J-E-S-U-S. Before we pray, Tonight, once and for all, I want to reveal to you what this name is. In my name, Kaya Sata Kabarata Makapakata Teketa Tadeka Seka Pata Beka Mambrosko Pekatalia Baba 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 Seke Proska Bariata Sokotopa Sopadiata Embleketeka in the name I come 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 in Get this revelation tonight. Get it. And rise to a new level. Get it. And rise to a new realm. A new dimension. You don't have to shake it. The real is here. The authentic is here. Listen. Listen. Look at me. Look at me. Listen. I want to explain something to you. Listen. Many of you think that it is an act of arrogance when I tell you all men are not equal. We are equal in Christ. But something has separated people. The Bible says there are some bodies terrestrial, some celestial. Not everybody you see is the same. It's not pride. This is why we are bringing us higher. I tell you the truth. You will shake hell. This is how you will live as if Satan does not exist. You are coming in the name. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. Zeka kapata katabalada bakate basle. Zende brato shalamai. Thank you, Lord. 
God doesn't care whether it's Koinonia or anywhere. Anywhere his name is mentioned, he shows up. He doesn't want to know whether you are playing or you are taking it serious. It's a law. When you invoke it, he shows up. Because every man answers his name. Only a dead man does not answer his name. Oh, I believe the Bible. There is an angel standing close to this lady. Breakthroughs are already happening. Deliverances are happening. Believe it. Deliverances are happening. I give the chains falling. Shakata baladaba. Strongholds. I give the chains falling. I command every chain fall. I give the chains falling. I command every chain fall. I give the chain falling. I command every chain fall. I command every chain fall. I command every captivity go to and from now. Every sickness go. Every infirmity go. 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 Every yoke. Every disease. I hear the I Shakata bakata la ba 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 ba. Chains Hallelujah. Look at me. Let me show you something that will surprise you. Hallelujah. Sam, come. Watch this. Father, let the sounds rise in your name. Watch what will happen as he sings. Just raise any song and sing. Let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy life and let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy life let hope rise was the same person that ministered the same person that seemed many of you do not understand the power in the name Jesus didn't lie to us believe me that name is powerful that name is powerful every demon and every spirit just the Simba in this place right now every foul devil at the count of three i come in the name go 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 every spirit every demon every devil i command you in the name go out out 
You will not return again. Go. Go. He said in his name, we will cast out demons. I cast out demons. Now, in that name, go. 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 I take a baba baba baba. So proto so prekete. Every problem you have come here with tonight, it leaves you here now. Every problem you came here with. I don't care what it is. In the name. In the name. It will bow now. Every problem. Every problem. Every challenge. Health. Finance. Go protect In the name of Jesus. down if you can. We have to finish this. Please sit down. Sit down. Sit down if you can. If they can't sit down, just leave them, please. We have to hurry up. I'm teaching you this because God is depending on you. The goal is not to watch a man of God do this. The goal is to show you that this is a possibility here and now. Take that name. Go and dislodge powers in your house. Let the people of God know that your coming for koinonia is not just a religion. Without a demonstration of the kingdom, they will doubt you. Go and change the things they say cannot be changed. See, you don't need to care how it will happen. Just go in the name. Just go in the name. Philippians chapter 2. Let me reveal to you what that name is. That's why I told us to pray in tongues. Something special, supernatural, about the name Jesus. Something happens when I mention your name. Listen. God gave us power to solve problems. If you are not interested in solving problems, you will never get the power of the Holy Spirit. Solve problems. Philippians chapter 2. Let's hurry up. There are many weapons of victory, but I'll talk on one. Philippians chapter 2. Let's take it from verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Verse 9. Wherefore, Kabbalataya, God had so highly exalted him. Stop. I taught us last week that until Jesus died and rose again, he was not yet exalted. Is that true? Listen, I want to surprise you. The name 
was not yet given to man officially until he was coronated. Are you getting me? Because as it were, when Jesus was on the earth, his name was limited. Why was it limited? Because he was a man and he had not defeated death. So the last enemy to be destroyed, death, still had power over him. Are you getting my point? This is the reason, listen please. This is the reason why when he sent the 70, he begged them not to go to certain places because the power would not work there. But when he resurrected, remember Mary wanted to touch him. And he said, no, don't touch me. You will corrupt a coronation that is about to take place. This is what the psalmist saw. And he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my, that was the coronation service of Jesus. The moment that happened, he returned to earth. And he said, all hail. Now, all power has been given. Go therefore. No boundaries, no limitations. You just go. Anywhere it will work because a coronation had happened. Are you getting the point now? So, it begins to give us by revelation. Paul said, wherefore, God exalted him and gave him. That means before then it had not been given. He gave him a name. What is this name that we have been looking for? He said, which is above every other name. Verse 10. Whatever that name is, whenever that name of Jesus, he said, at the name of Jesus, the name is not Jesus. Every knee should bow at the name that was given to this person called Jesus. You get my point? Every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in the earth and of things under the earth ready for the name let me show you 11 and every tongue should confess that that jesus christ has now received a name that is called lord that's the name that's the name that was given to him look at it that's the name lord psalm 24 quickly psalm 24 Psalm 24, verse 1. Psalm 24, verse 1. Are you there? Everybody read one to go. Stop. Did he say the earth belongs to God? Do you know what Lord is? Lord means master. Lord means owner. Ma Lord means authorized legislator. Authorized. So the earth belongs to whoever will bear this name called Lord. The name was reserved. No one had taken the name yet. When Jesus defeated death, God said you now qualify. Take the name. So you now become the literal possessor of the earth. Are you getting me now? The earth is the Lord's. So the Bible says, if you want the name, here is the condition. The name is upon a mountain, but who shall ascend to that hill and who shall stand in his holy place? This is the requirement. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, no man qualified to ascend that hill. But Jesus was as a man tempted like us, yet without sin. So he ascended the mountain. That's why the Bible says, before he led captivity captive, he first ascended, he descended. After that, he ascended. He took the name and he came back and he entered the room without the door. And he said, all hail, all authority has been given to me. Listen, this is what Jesus said. Listen, he said, whoever believes in me, I will give the privilege to share my name. You get the point? That name, Lord. So just like me, he will become an authorized legislator. So in my name, he will cast out devils. So that it will not make any difference whether it was Jesus speaking physically or you or a handkerchief. Whatever comes in the name brings the presence of Jesus directly. That's why 
whether you speak English or Hausa or Greek demons don't hear those things they didn't speak English in Bible days all you need to do is come in the name so handkerchiefs and aprons were taken handkerchiefs and aprons they contacted the name Lord it says and the fullness thereof the world and all they that dwell therein listen 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 please the lordship of Jesus is the revelation that when you come under you have carried the name it's not Jesus it is a revelation that this man God has made him both Lord and Christ he's not just the anointed but he has become the owner are you listening to me so if I look at this sister for instance I come in the name because she belongs to God I have the authority to cast out whatever is molesting her because I come in the name are you getting the revelation hold on many people think it is J-E-S-U-S -S. do you know why we shout Jesus we want unbelievers to know that the owner of that name is Jesus are you getting my point when you tell demons go is go j-e-s-u-s is go l-o-r-d they search in the spirit to see whether you have the revelation of that name once you have it they will obey you so after this night you will go back home in the name many of you you will go and look for what you left and say where is it and it will say i left because the person who left was not the person who came back you came in the name remember there was a certain time even the disciples could not cast out devils from the epileptic patient because they did not have the name they thought it was just Jesus doing a lot of things now when they had the name Peter was angry in Acts 3 he said now it's my time to shine he saw the man who was lame and the Bible says it says silver and gold I don't have but I have something you can know you have something he said this is what I have in the name you see that that was his treasure he said this one no man can take it from me I may not have silver and gold but I have something that can solve your problem in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up the man was still looking at him and Peter said you don't know the power of the name I'm invoking he held him and the Bible says he leaping stood son of man he said can these dry bones live he said I don't know he said all right now you prophesy he said I prophesied as I was commanded that's the secret when God gives you his name he has authorized you to legislate on his behalf as many as received him he gave them power the power is not falling and rolling on the floor the power is the ability to share in his lordship Hallelujah. this is what makes ordinary men to become something else so that you see an ordinary man moving but you don't try him when he calls on a government that is bigger than you, you see that we are going to pray I've been hearing that there are many people that molest people on their way home we are going to pray let me tell you the truth I pity the next person that would try to molest anybody here it's the name it's the name listen please I want you to believe this believe this years ago they stole my laptop thieves came to our house we were all sleeping they just carried the laptop and my brothers were running to chase them and honestly when I got up I just had commotion and I was laughing my own was not that I lost that I was just laughing I said oh God I love you if my laptop doesn't return give me money to buy another one and an angel appeared before me and he just did this and that was the end of it seven hours later the laptop was back on my table hallelujah some people from nowhere mobilized themselves and made up their mind to look for the thief they went and caught him in pizza i was busy counseling the name see 
the name of Jesus is powerful. Don't let secular humanism or the things that you that did not work for you before make you think it does not work. Are you getting me? You say, ah, but I use the name. I told you they stole my wallet. My, the wallet didn't come back. But that does not ever mean that the name is not powerful. This is the problem with a lot of people. We are too, our, our faith is too small. The moment something does not happen, we just conclude. This thing doesn't work. You think so? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me stop here. We'll continue next week. Rise up. I feel the spirit of prayer. Hold your hands together. Hold your hands and pray in the spirit. Just for five minutes. Please. All the instruments coming. Pray Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we'll take three prayer points. Number one, listen. Let me tell you why this name does not work for many people. There is a little secret in the Bible that many of us ignore. The secret to resisting the devil. The Bible says, submit to the mighty hand of God. Submit. Your degree of submission is your degree to which his authority will flow. Many of us have not yet submitted to the Lordship. You have given your heart to the Lord. That's true. But you have not come under his influence. Tonight, you are going to pray and say, Lord, I willingly submit to your authority, to your government. Pray and watch the wonder. Watch the wonder of what will begin to happen in your life. Inside and outside, make sure you are praying. Pray and watch the wonder of what will begin to happen in your life. Lord, I submit to your governing influence. Lord, I submit to your mighty hand. I submit. I submit. Lord, I submit. Every Hallelujah. Listen. The centurion surprised Jesus Christ. He gave Jesus a revelation that touched him. The, Jesus said, let's go to your house. He said, no, you don't need to go. For I am a man under authority. I'm under the authority of the Roman government and by reason of being under that authority I tell one go and he will go I'll tell the other come and Jesus said what? I've not seen this kind of faith this kind of revelation in Israel submit yourself to the mighty hand of God then resist the devil hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the next five minutes, I like you. I don't know how you are going to pray. Leave your hands. Praise God. 
I know we are men of prayer. Listen, you have been confronting darkness, but you try it now in the name. You, you see the revelation, David met Goliath. He said, you come to me with your spears, but I come to you in a name, in a name. You come to me with bow and arrow. I mean, I may be small, but there is a name, an office. I invoke the power of an office. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. That's what the Lord is asking you tonight. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. What is it that he cannot do? Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. The God of wonders that can change situations. That is too hard for me to do. I am that I am. Hallelujah. Now listen. The issues that have been affecting your life and your family in the next five minutes tell it i confront you in the name that sickness in the name come on prayer warriors come on prayer warriors we confront in the name we confront infirmity in the, in the name, name. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in His temple. The Lord is in His temple. The situation in my family is changing. Is changing. Is changing. I command breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I command breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I command healing. I command miracles. Jobs. Command your marriage. Command your prayer life. Come alive. Confront. Your unemployment issue. Confront your business. Confront your family. I come in the name. I come in the name. I come in the name. Set a dead loss. The Lord rebuke you. 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 Let change fall. Let miracles occur. Let testimonies occur. Lord, I release breakthrough. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. Please listen. We are going to pray. And this night, you are going to say, I take my eyes away from every challenge. Whatever the devil has used to discredit God in my life. Are you hearing me? 
there are many of us that cannot trust God because of the things that have happened or the things that are happening the bible says abraham wavered not at his faith through unbelief he considered not the deadness of sarah's womb although she was close to a hundred years he counted him faithful faithful god cannot lie satan can be tired your faith can weary the devil listen right now i want you to lift up your voice and begin to prophesy and say i take my eyes away i don't care what is not working or what is working god you are faithful and your word must ah, come to pass. You are not a man. Come on, lift your faith. Lift your voice and pray. Provoke faith. I'm a believer. I believe the word. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word will not fail. The word will not fail. Pray. Let us so cry in my spirit. Oh, I believe God. I believe God. His promises are yea and amen. Pray. That sickness will leave. That oppression will leave. That failure will fall. The marriage will come. The job will come. The building will be completed. Your spiritual life will grow. Your prayer life will grow. The habit will die. The marriage will work. Pray. Yes, Lord. We are men of faith. We are a faith filled generation. Koinonia is a place of faith. God took the faith. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. Thou cannot be shaken, but abide there forevermore. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and live not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I see a lot of testimonies coming. Mighty testimonies. Believe me, mighty testimonies. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last prayer point. I'm led for us to do this. Hallelujah. You're going to hold hands with somebody. If you can pair yourselves into three, that will be excellent. You are going to pray for the finances of the people in that circle. Provoke the heavens to be open. The Lord in this month, if, if there are not enough people, just hold two or three, anybody. Come on, pray now. We command it. We command it in the name of Jesus. Let there be testimonies, breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, testimonies. Pray, it will happen. Pray, it will work. Pray. He spake a parable. To the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Shekata bakata prekete baradaba. Shoprokoto prekete. Visit families, oh God. Visit your people in mighty ways. Visit your people in miraculous ways. prophesy gentiles come to your light kings to the brightness of thy rising your gates are continually open to receive the forces of the gentiles 
you will call on one person and a nation will answer you hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Brothers and sisters, you do not do good to your loved ones if you carry all this revelation and not work with it. It has nothing to do with MOG. It's about being an ambassador, an envoy of his presence. Now you know that you are not ordinary. It's not just the issue of confessing it. It is the truth. It is your present reality. No matter how weak you think you are. Our job here is to make you become strong. The Bible says ordinary men came to the cave of Adulam. And David made mighty men out of them. Hallelujah. You are not ordinary. There is an anointing upon you. There is an unction walk conscious of it it should not create pride and arrogance you are like a dove but where you see the devil you switch and you become a roaring lion listen i'm giving you an assignment this week take on a project resist the devil everywhere you see him are you getting my point if you look at yourself alone and all the revelations you have alone, you are small. Are you getting my point? But realize there is an authority. Every time you stand before situations, just know that I am small, but there is one who is mightier than I. This, is, this was a testimony of John the Baptist. There is one who is mightier than I. Invoke his presence to the scene and go to bed. When you go home, all those spirits that come to molest and press you, you tell them now, I sleep in the name. Come and press me. Yes. Absolutely. I told you my story. I was being oppressed by devils. Although a preacher, because I did not understand the revelation, the Bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. Hallelujah. I don't drive devils from me. When I caught the revelation, I went home and I shouted. I said, the spirits that oppress me, I invite you this night. They were officially invited until tomorrow they have not come. Never. Look, realize this. Just as Father Abraham and the rich man, there was a gulf that divided them. Revelation is what will exalt you. Are you getting my point? Anything in your life that is not working, as little as anything, hallelujah, you find something growing in your hand that should not grow. Don't just laugh. See, the problem is many of us are not convicted enough. So you get ashamed once you go outside of this circle. You don't want to look like you are a spirit coco. That's the problem. So we can jump. There are many of us here that you behave as if you are convinced. But the sincere truth is if you walk out of here, you are ashamed of everything you were shouting and praying about. And when it takes, it, it comes to taking steps of faith. Even when your phone rings and it's a scripture, you answer it or off it quickly lest you be embarrassed do you think that god did not know what to do with his time and he just brought men in the air to deceive them but i know whom i have believed i'm persuaded any day any time on jeans on trousers on suit i am persuaded i would die believing this revelation hallelujah Please be convinced. Listen, 
Many of us, in all sincerity, we don't spend time with the word of God. There are many of us, after today now, is until next Friday again, before you open your Bible and start smiling. You see, ba, brothers and sisters, this thing, you can't fake it. If you are not doing it genuinely, it will show. Are you getting my point? No, this is not one of the things you fake. You can't fake conviction. No. You can't fake conviction. You can play games with power. You can do a lot of things. But you cannot fake conviction. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to speak over your life. Please believe. It's part of the things that we do all the time. I wrote a post and I gave the media to put it on Facebook. I am not on Facebook, but once in a while as the Holy Spirit puts it in my heart, I write these prayers and they are not just to get activities. No. Hallelujah. It's our job to speak over your life. Listen, there is power in the blessing. Hallelujah. Many of you do not know to bless means to empower you to prosper, to rise from where you are. He said, blessed be Abraham, son of the most high, possessor of the heavens and earth, and his destiny opened up. Please lift your hands. I want to speak over your life. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you with the favor of God. I declare over your life, that you are well favored. Amen. You are like a well watered garden. Amen. Whatever looks like mockery in your life, I curse it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I speak over the works of your hands, I instruct them to prosper. I instruct them to prosper. Amen. Whatever project you are having, I speak to it. Grow Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything that is alive grows. Therefore, I command it to grow. Amen. I speak and I pray over your life. All the destiny helpers that are required to take you and to lift your hand and to introduce you to those who will take you to the next level. I call them into your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that the name works for you. The same anointing you see in this house. Carry it and do wonders with it. Change destinies. Affect lives. Heal sick bodies. The same way the devil runs here, he will run in every area of your life. I speak over your life. Whoever you bless is blessed. Whoever you anoint is anointed. Whatever your hand touches, it prospers. I bless you above every curse. I bless you above every limitation. I prophesy, let Reuben live. Whatever is dead in your life, whether in your organs, in your system, whatever should be there and is not there, we create it now. 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 Whatever should not be in your body and is in your body at this moment as I speak, I command it to live now. And never return again. Amen. I bless your finances. Amen. We are a prosperous people. Amen. And I declare that prosperity follows you. Amen. You are blessed in your health. Amen. Your mind is blessed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Wisdom is at work in your life. Amen. You are men and women of character. Amen. You are men and women of power. Amen. You hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You are men of faith. You are women of faith. Return with amazing testimonies. Whoever has mocked at your God, I pray this night 
that may the God I serve, may he step in like a warrior in your life and surprise they that have mocked God in your life. Whoever has laughed at your Christianity, I pray, except it is not the God of heaven that wrote, that inspired the writing of this word, I pray right now, be lifted above your equals. May they see your lifting. You do not merit it, but let the grace of God take you. May the grace of God take you. I command the words of your mouth from today, may they carry power. You will solve problems with your mouth. As you speak it, you will see it. I prophesy as you speak it, you will see it. The Bible says, and God said it, and he saw, and he said, and he saw. As you say, may you see. Hallelujah. I agree with you right now. Whatever you have fasted and fasted and prayed about, in the name that is above all names, I introduce the faith of the Son of God in your situation. And I compel that mountain to fall now. That dagon that attempts to speak against your life, I come with the rod of a higher priesthood and I command that dagon, that devil, you bow now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And any man that wants to molest your life, whether as an arm robber, as wicked, see, listen, can I tell you something? I don't believe in killing people. But the prayer I'm about to pray is dangerous. I don't care who right now, whoever is tying down your life and destiny. Hear me. This night, if I be a servant of God, I don't care who. The judgment of God, this night, locates that one and brings them to do. Now, now, I don't care who. In the mighty name of Jesus, whoever says you will not go, he will go for you now. Whoever says you will not leave, he will die for your sake. Whoever says you will not prosper, I curse their word. I curse their prophecy. I shared with you about the mystery of wickedness. Let me tell you, wickedness is real. Wickedness exists. I'm praying again this night. I, whoever has vowed that is not with his eyes, he will see your progress. This night, this night I pray, just as an angel of death went round Egypt, I command, let there be shiftings. I don't care who, I don't care where, I release judgment, 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 this night.
Touching the people here, there is something the atmosphere is doing. Let's just finish the prayer for this.
God is a glorious God. God is a miracle worker. God is a glorious God. God is, God is, is a miracle worker. a lion in the spirit this guy has a wild spirit when he's angry he can kill and it's not his fault this is this is an ancestral thing see how many people trying to hold one person this is how it will tie his destiny this is how he will get married to a very innocent lady and be manifesting things that he doesn't know i set you free right now this is a place of liberty leave him leave him he's free Oh, yeah, the 
Setting families free right now from marital delay. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. All those affected, as you count three, the fire of God will sweep across this place. There are marital destinies that have been tied down. Some of you, you are standing, but you are representing your family in the name that is above all names. Right now, anyone tied under any manifestation spirit husband spirit wife every manifestation of darkness as you shout the name jesus right now i command those doors to be open one two three free i set you free now right now right now right now be free I open up doors of marriages inside and outside. Be free. Be free. Every spell, every curse stopping your marital destiny. Hallelujah. Mommy, please can I talk to you? Your time of visitation has come because the Lord is saying he's going to wipe your tears and he's going to do this speedily. It's by the hand of the Lord. Please, where is your husband, man? Do you know why I'm asking you this? Because your situation is like in a similitude of that of Sarah, but God is going to wipe your tears. Please believe me. When I pray for you, I'm praying for marital delays. And then I'm looking at you. And the Lord is saying that this woman does not even have a husband. At the point I even say, ah, what is this? Is that true? And I'm asking myself, but I'll pray for you. You, you trust God to settle down? I'll pray for you. Yes, it will happen. It will happen. Anyone here due for marriage, listen anyone here be it yourself or any member of your family that is long overdue for marriage right now i prophesy in the name that is above all names let those doors be open now may those doors be open now something is happening in this place may those doors be open now May those doors be open now. Madam, you will stand before the people of God when your wedding card is out. If there is a God in heaven, I break that curse right now. Now! And I release your marital destiny. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the Lord God Almighty. He's the Lord God Almighty. The earth is full of His glory. My life is full of Your glory. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. And the people say, Hallelujah. All of you lift your hands. God is going to do something amazing here right now. Listen. Everyone is standing for himself now. Not for family. Please lift your hands. Listen. I'm seeing powers that have tied down the advancement of people. Listen to me. Because the Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing someone standing with a sword. And this is a sword of judgment. This one is not for families again. There are many of us, you are walking, but you are standing because nothing is moving. Right now, in the name of Jesus, many of you will literally feel the fire of God come upon you like a baptism. It's burning chaffs, burning chains. Some of you, your academics are the way they are right now because of powers. Neke paratika. Come on now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Right now, chains be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Chains be broken. Baptisms are happening. Baptisms of fire. Personal deliverances of fire, fire, fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. It's time for you to move forward. Fresh fire to move forward. Fresh fire. No stagnation. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still going to do this again. Listen, I'm telling you, this is the root problem of many of the our predicaments. There are there are forces. Please follow me. This is the part you get to participate. Lift your hands again. Lord, what is it that has tied your people down? They have prayed for others. They have ministered to others. But right now, like a volcano, let the fire of God sweep across this place. Right now, let it burn the roots. Let it burn the roots. Set the roots on fire. Set the roots on fire. Let your people make progress. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let's enter the realm of your academics now. There are horns. Tied people's CGPA. Tied people's minds. But he said, I have sent carpenters. Lift your hands. It's not everyone that is dull. There are people who are studying. You are doing your best right now all of those ones your hands fire is coming on your hands just your hands there will be a mighty deliverance right now one two three fire on your hands on your hands fire academic liberty fire on your hands we break those chains we break those chains we break those chains. Come on, join me as you pray. Join me as you pray. Academic chains be broken. Oh. 
Alléluia. There are some of us, listen. God is setting people free tonight. One cycle of tragedy, as soon as it's finishing, another one is starting. It, it never comes to a point where your family can experience peace. The Bible says, and he dug a well, and they came and closed it. He dug another one, and they closed it. And he dug the third one, and they left it, and they said, Rehoboth, the Lord has given me room. I'm praying right now. Please pay attention to what I'm doing. This is the root cause. Believe me, you will be wasting your time for nothing. If you don't confront these powers, you can receive temporary breakthrough, but you will get back into the same situation. Hallelujah. In fact, we are going to pray just for one minute. Hallelujah. You are going to pray. I like you to pray like a priest. In the next one to two minutes, listen. I like you to tell the Lord that whatever is the root cause, you are not concerned about the fruits and the leaves. It may be headache, leave that one. Lord, what is the root cause of my stagnation? What is the root cause of my family's problem? In the name of Jesus, let it be confronted tonight. Lift your voice and pray. We attack the root causes of sicknesses, the root causes. Pray, pray for your business, pray for your ministry, pray for your academics. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. But there are many of us here. The troubles in our lives are as a result of the mistakes and the wickedness for some of us of our parents and loved ones. He said, who's seen that this man is in this situation? Is it him or his father? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Please lift your hands. God is setting men free tonight. Anyone here going through circles of tragedy as a result of covenant and parental influence, as you shout the name Jesus after the count of three, may the fire of God separate you from the mistakes of your lineage. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Be separated, be separated, be separated, now, be separated, I break limitations, ancestral spirits, tribal spirits, territorial spirits, right now, be free, every name that is in any demonic covenant, we set it on fire now. We set it on fire now. Jesus died to set us free. Jesus truly died to set us free. It wasn't a joke. He said, but we do not see all things under his feet. Lift your hands again. Your hands again. 
Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I am ready to make progress. I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready to break barriers. And tonight, by the blood of Jesus, I confront and challenge the root causes of my limitation. Lift your voice and begin to pray. We challenge it. We challenge powers that have limited men. There must be a release tonight. Jacob wrestled with God. Pray. 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 It's time for you to move forward. It's time for you to break limits. Break limits. I tell you, God is there are there are massive, there is an emancipation. Lift your hands again. Say after me in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus speaks for me. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the price for my freedom. Listen, keep the hands lifted. Just keep them lifted. All instruments just stop. Just lift your hands and keep them lifted. There is a reason why I'm saying you should keep them lifted. Hallelujah. The spirit of God is going to walk through the crowd. Listen. Just keep them lifted. Something marvelous will happen right now. I'm seeing water that God is pouring on people. Right now, let the power of God move everywhere. Inside and outside. This water that I see an angel pouring is a cleansing. It's a purging of many people's foundations. Just keep your hands lifted. You may not understand what is going on but just lift your hands if you trust that God is in this place let the angels move right now row to row line to line visit men oh God visit men visit men Katelato. row to row water there are three that bear witness in heaven the spirit the water the blood I invoke the power of these three spiritual entities right now the mystery of the spirit the water and the blood I tell you see many of you will will walk into levels of breakthrough that will surprise you keep it lifted just keep it lifted keep it lifted you don't know what is happening in the spirit just keep it lifted Jesus I see covens on fire I'm telling you covens of darkness on fire this is not just your family this is your life now you prayed for your family but you need to move forward otherwise men will think you are faking this thing a chain is falling from someone's head a chain is falling from someone's head a chain is falling from someone's head I see this in the spirit. A chain is falling. This is mental bondage. A chain is falling. I'm hearing sounds of chains. Hallelujah. 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 
Now, before we submit the prayer request, lift your hands. You are going to mention one thing, just one, that you want God to do, that everyone will know that this one, I prayed it here and God did it. Are you getting my point now? I'm just walking based on the instructions of the Spirit. He wants to give you a sign of His presence in your life. I know you wrote many things. Brothers and sisters, in the next one minute, cry out one thing. One. Just one. Don't be foolish. Pray. Pray. I'm ministering by the influence of the Spirit. Pray. No matter how impossible it is, pray. So, Topa, unto you that answers prayers, will all flesh come. Unto you that answers prayers. So, Posa, Leke, Sepanda, Rekete Kapa. What thing soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that you have received it. Believe that you have received it. There is nothing out for my God. Pray it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone, let's pray in tongues for one minute as we collect the prayer request. Please go ahead. God is just leading us to pray and He's doing many things in the background. Please, quickly, in one minute, let's submit the prayer request. Pass it to the last person. Pass it to the last person. Ushers, please, cooperate with us and let's hurry up. Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Keep passing the request, but listen to me. I made a vow to God. I just returned from my retreat. And one of the vows that I made to God is that I don't care what people would think about me. But if I ever have the opportunity to minister to God's people, i rather have an ugly message and let people get results. Are you getting what I'm saying? Part of my, my prayer, and I, I took out time to cry. I said, Lord, your people must see your hand. He says, oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My heart longs after you. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. That means what I have seen in the sanctuary. I am also a sanctuary. Reproduce the result in my life. Hallelujah. So this program is aimed at bringing everyone into a place of personal spiritual success. And let me tell you, I know that it's not a very nice message. I wish that I didn't have to pray to confront spirits and powers that stop people. I like to preach a nice message that will just tell you that don't worry. If you believe everything is, has, has gone, it has gone. I wish, I just wish it were like that. But brothers and sisters, I can tell you, it is not. It is not. You will believe that lie to your detriment. It is not. We live in a rude world and there are forces. Otherwise, the anointing of the Spirit is useless. What then is the purpose of the anointing? What then is the efficacy of the blood? Why then does Paul tell us to put on? Hallelujah. I want your life to experience breakthroughs. See, otherwise, 
we have no right to tell people we are not faking it are you getting my point if there is no breakthrough in your life then what then is the confidence of the message that people keep saying God is I'm one I believe that one result can silence a lot of questions I'm not that believer that likes just no there must be an evidence in your life I don't know how many times I saw this when I kept praying the Lord kept talking to me and said the root cause deal with the root cause of people's lives root cause I'm telling you it's not just healing alone that's why you notice I pray for the sick very quickly hallelujah thank you Jesus Christ we are going to pray one prayer point before we have all the prayer requests here inside and outside make sure you are participating hallelujah I like you to pray and challenge every limitation whether mental whether spiritual anything that limits you is not of God lift up your voice and confront it I break limitations if there are no limitations you will make progress if there are no limitations you will make progress please everyone pray take this seriously even if you are walking be praying as you're walking Lord I challenge limitations let there be no limits in my life let there be no limits in my life let there be no boundaries as far as your eyes can see as far as your eyes can see ushers please let's hurry up ushers please let's hurry up so potoko pata da 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 so preteke le bondo subandi le kabaria so preteke le boko to ba 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 hallelujah hallelujah we are still going to pray I'm going to be laying hands on these requests hallelujah pair yourselves into two find a man or a woman of prayer we are challenging limitations that word limitation media project it that word limitation write it that's the word we are attacking this night ye have tarried in this mountain for too long he said turn ye not words hallelujah hold on before you pray while I lay my hands here hallelujah hold the hands of the person you are going to pray if there is nobody you can join and make two or three say in the name of Jesus one more time say in the name of Jesus I come as an ambassador of the kingdom And I challenge every limitation in every area of my life. I command it to bow down. The Bible says, Naaman, hear me, Second Kings 5. Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a mighty man, but tonight we are going to confront the bots in our lives. You are academically excellent, but there are limitations. I don't know if there are limitations in someone's life that you are saying, Lord, in this miracle service, this is it. Hallelujah. While I pray in the next two to three minutes, instrumentalists play, clash the cymbal, and everyone pray. Hold the hands of your neighbor. If he's joking, leave him and hold another person.
confronting limitations many of you don't know what limitations are you poverty is a limitation are you getting my point spiritual bankruptcy is a limitation a prayerless life is a capital limitation a wordless life is a limitation when you are supposed to get married and you've not gotten married it's a limitation academic backwardness see there are very few people who are here for for sicknesses and all is is limitation that's the name of what you are going through hallelujah before i prophesy we'll soon have the last session and then we're, we're done we're still going to pray don't be tired i beg you just follow through with me if you believe that I hear God and if you believe we are walking by the Spirit, I'd like you to pray. Hallelujah. Limitations. I know a brother, listen, listen. I know a brother that for many years, this gentleman was so gifted, but I'm telling you, nothing was working in his life. Please hear me. 
this is a true story very gifted but things were tied down hallelujah he did everything did everything that that he knew to do but when god made him know that these things are limitations he took a quality time of his life challenging it and brothers and sisters when he prevailed doors were open it was as if the blessings have left heaven but to now come to this realm and daniel remained in prayer please hear me anything that kills your prayer life has stopped you from your breakthrough it's not the issue of i'm called into the ministry of prayer or not forget that nonsense that the devil brings men ought always look 18 1 he spake this parable if you are alive you don't pray because of fear you pray because it's a spiritual transaction it makes things possible in this realm hallelujah we're going to pray one more time and you're going to say lord one more time visit this issue of limitation in my life and my family hallelujah listen listen mention the aspects where you are facing limitation don't feel embarrassed mention them and say lord let your fire come upon it lift your voice and pray koinonia pray pray your way to breakthrough sopata Teka repoto pakata sente teke pretekete superiata daraba. We lift up an incense of prayer. 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 Change lives. Break limits. Financial limits. Support Sata intellectual limits, marital limits, job limits. We break it. Support Opata. We break limitations, business limitations, ministry limitations limitations of potentials hallelujah the last prayer point hallelujah the last prayer point every time limits are broken the Lord will bring a man to hold your hands and create the opportunity for the next level of your life are you hearing what I'm saying Bishop Oyedeko will say there are days and there are certain days. May this night be the certain day. Listen. Your next level is in the hands of a certain man. The Bible says they wanted to kill Joseph but a certain man came and they said they wanted to buy him. If not because of that certain man they would have killed him. Are you following me now? The Bible talks about a man who was crippled he could not carry himself certain men no names they lifted him and opened the sea oh god whoever is that certain man that must appear my destiny i come i compel them to come lift your voice and pray lift your voice destiny help us financial help us spiritual help us men of influence Man of access. Sopotoposh, Rokotoposh, Reketetete. Men that will connect us to our next level. Men that will connect us to our next dimension. Please pray. 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 Lord, we call them for. Hallelujah. When Jesus died, hear me, the prophet prophesied that his body will not see corruption. But he was hanging on that cross. There was no place to bury him. And a certain man came.
called Joseph of Arimathea, an influential man. If he was poor and broke, the king would not hear him. The Bible says a poor man's wisdom is despised. You are going to pray concerning your finances. Does it make sense to you to pray? We are going to pray and say, Lord, whoever must appear to change my financial destiny, I receive their ministry. Come on now, pray. Come on now, pray. Support it, 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 it. Time and chance happens to them all. Time and chance. Be it a Cyrus or a son of the kingdom. Pray. We embrace their ministry. We embrace their ministry. I call them forth. Come on, pray. I call them forth. Men of influence, kings, destiny help us, spiritual help us, financial help us, academic help us. Men of influence, men who can talk to kings. Pray. Hallelujah. Please leave your neighbor. Joseph would have died in the prison. Although anointed, there are many people here, your anointing will remain dormant until God sends a man to see it, announce it, and let the world celebrate it. John the Baptist announced Jesus' ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of us, we have great ideas, great businesses, but there needs to be a certain man who will let the world know that great things are happening here. Please hear what I'm saying. There are many of you, your, your academic qualification is bigger than where you are. You have done your best. When you have done all you need to do, you need another man who is not you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Certain men, certain men. It was the wine presser that told the king, He said, I know my wrongs this day. There is a man, oh, there is a man. Many of us have sharpened our spiritual potentials, you have sharpened your leadership potentials. It's not pride, you know that it's time to break forth, but the distance between you and the next level is that certain man lift up your hands oh god where is this certain man let him come into my life come on pray one more time pray it takes one man to change your business one man to change your ministry one man one man hallelujah listen to me there are many of you here with great business ideas hallelujah all you need is capital you have done everything you should do you need somebody to believe in you enough hallelujah listen truly the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong one man can announce what god is doing in your life and bring to your life men who have been designed to honor it I shared that scripture to none of the widows in Israel was a prophet sent God sent that to the one who could see his difference and honor him many of you have been in a place you have potentials for the throne but something is tying you down 
because you are hanging around people who cannot see what God is doing in your life. Is God speaking to someone here? There are many of our parents with their qualifications, they should never have to beg. Even if, you, if the cost of living on earth is one million per day, they should not be begging. But they need one man to announce them. One man to recommend them. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Because this is somebody's prayer request. Oh Lord, if somebody can believe in my business enough to pump even if it's just 100,000 there. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us in ministry here. We are great people. This ministry you see today, we enjoy recommendations. Mysterious recommendations. While I was coming, somebody was trying to call me again and again from the UK. And he was saying, man of God, don't ask me how I got to find out about you and have your number. He said, when a man is in trouble, he will look for help anyhow. Are you getting my point? While you are sitting down to sleep, somebody is waking others to talk about you. But you must activate it. It doesn't happen by magic. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many professors and doctors being underutilized because there is a system that cannot honor what they carry. There are many of you who graduated with excellent results. You've even added masters. And the king sent for Joseph. Somebody must send for you to lead the level that you have. And I prophesy, whoever should send for you in the name that is above all names. Listen, listen. There is a man of God, a popular man of God. I will not mention names. The man had the gift of God like whatever. But nothing could announce that grace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People needed his anointing and his gift. But nobody could announce it. And then something happened. One day, he entered a taxi. True story. When he entered a taxi, the Holy Spirit told him, sow a seed of 30,000 naira to the driver. And he didn't have much. And he told the driver, take. And he sowed that seed. Ah! The driver looked at him. He said, what will I give you? He said, nothing. He said, sir, can I collect your number? And he collected his number. Please listen to me. This is a true story. When he collected his number, the guy dropped. He said, Tom, may God bless you. He was feeling bad. He did not know that that was his moment of victory. Listen. The very next person that will enter that car, listen, they were part of the regional organizers of Redeem, the convention in UK. Are you getting me? One of the regions. And then the man was talking and said, Kai, we are looking for a man of God to complete the ministers we are bringing. And we need men of integrity, you know. And the driver said, sir, there was a man that gave me his number. This guy is a true man of God. And that was it. I'm serious. They called him and they said, sorry, we are from this, this region of Redeem. I tell you, they brought that man after that ministration. There were so many men of God that he never would have been able to see. Are you getting my point? They all called him and said, we'd like you to come and, and minister. Mike Mudok met a young man who was very gifted. Gifted, but there was nothing working in his life. And Mike Mudok looked at him and came. And he said, God told me to bless you. He wrote 17 letters to different ministries and said, this is an anointed man. Please open doors for him. And the guy got 17 invitations. Everybody. It does not take time to change your story. What looks like a mountain is in the pocket of another person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you tired of praying? Are you tired of praying? Because we must call them for. I don't want to waste your time. Let me just share it. I don't know if you share this testimony. Did you share your testimony, Erima? I'm not sure he shared his testimony. Maybe at an appointed time, but let me say a bit of it. What ambassador? Eh? Unilever. This come. He just came back today. We met together at the airport in Abuja and then we came back together. By the grace of God, are you getting my point? And by the ministry of just one great man, prof. Hallelujah. He has been selected as the ambassador of Unilever Nigeria. Are you, listen, listen, listen. The race is not to the swift. 
they just came back from their training in Lagos and we even bombed I was waiting for my luggage and I just saw him and they had told me he called me in Lagos and he said he was around we never met how God can change a man's story my father worked for more than 10 or 15 years as assistant director of engineering there was no man to lift him his genius were rising and they, they, they just trampled this man and it so happened that one man who used to be his junior he went when we went for crusade in 2006 six years he was the one who interpreted for me and he was also the one who interpreted for Renard Bonke when he came to Joss he was that man on account of the kindness he went and said one or two things about my father and when they went to my father's um, CV and all of that they said where has this man been they said immediately he should leave Joss and report to Lagos. He has been there for three years now. Many of us are praying, Lord, take me to the next level. I'm telling you the secret. You need a man. Hear me. There are things you cannot do for yourself. You may be anointed, but your grace will remain there until a man can announce. You may have a great business, a multi-million and billion dollar business, but it takes one man to believe in you and announce you. Are you getting my point? I know one of my friends. He was my classmate. Very intelligent and brilliant guy. This guy finished, furthered his education. There was nobody to speak for him. And this guy kept struggling for years. Nobody to speak for him. And one day I, I prayed. I said, oh Lord, but help this guy. This guy has paid the price. Look, when I say, I, I think I will classify him as a genius. And I'm not telling a lie. But I know other people, before they even finish service, the road has been made plain. You need someone in your life. Please pray and say, oh God, send this man that can believe in me and announce what you have invested in my life. Please pray. Send a man to change my music ministry, oh God send a man send a man into my family koinonia pray we are rounding up sopotopata send a man send a man send a man send a man into my life pray for your business pray for your job one recommendation is all you need. One man who can believe in you. Struggling continues until there is a voice that can speak for you. Struggling continues until there is a man that can believe in you and invest in your grace. hallelujah rise up on your feet I want to prophesy into your life I truly believe that this miracle service will bring remarkable results hallelujah lift your hands please as much as possible if you can stand stand inside and outside has thou commanded thy morning this system of God's kingdom does not work without it being activated. Hallelujah. Don't get too familiar that every miracle service we are speaking, there is something that is happening. Hallelujah. We are entering the eighth month. And I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of your son Jesus Christ the son of the living God I prophesy right now whoever needs to come into anyone's life for the next dimension of their lives to open up I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus Business help us, ministry help us, marriage help us, 
anyone called jobless in this place in the name that is above all names we command by the power of the holy ghost let doors of job be open right now let it be open right now anyone called barry 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 in the name that is above all names we provoke fruitfulness we provoke fruitfulness hallelujah anything in your life that is dying business ministry potentials your gift your ideas your proposals your letters your visions your dreams in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I knock on the door of life and I command that let there be life 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 to that dry bone hallelujah everything that represents tragedy and disfavor in your life that it keeps working for others until it gets to your turn in the name that is above all names may supernatural doors of favor be open right now hallelujah i want to pray for your finance the lord is leading me to do this as many of you who believe it please can you hold a seed in your hand get a seed for some of you it may be a sacrificial seed if you don't believe it just just forget about it we don't cajole people we don't tell lies i want to speak into your finances hallelujah please lift it up is a prayer and a duty that god will come through in every area of our life but let me tell you something it will take a seed to open up the heavens. Just leave the hands. Leave the hands. I want to rebuke the devourer. For some of you, this is for you a seed of mercy. To speak over your non-tithing. For some of you, this is a seed of wisdom. To open you up to ideas of wealth. For some of you, this is a seed of open heavens. A seed of breakthrough. Just lift it up. Lift it up. The Lord is showing me 11 people. The fire of God is coming on your seat from your hand. 11 people. 11 people. Right now. Lord, let your power move. Let them know that this is not just a conjuring of men. 11 people. 11 people. Super Yatamba. Let that seed be salted with fire. We give it a voice in the realm of the spirit. Please lift it up. Let me speak. With this seed, higher, the power of God is moving because poverty, poverty is one thing that God hates. Don't ever let anybody convince you that God is the author of lack and poverty. Your seed, your seed is the key to getting out of this level. Trust me, this is not a financial gimmick. Father, right now, with this seed, in the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of poverty, goodness, goodness, how could we have ended this service without prophesying look at spirits i see it in the spirit there is an exit of wicked forces tying people's finances father in the name of jesus we release by the mystery of divine supply let there be abundance now let there be abundance now everything that has tied your financial life and that of your family we contend together as a family that it must be released in the name of jesus go ahead and drop the seed and pray in tongues quickly please we are rounding up 
please quickly ushers let's save time many of you will experience breakthroughs mighty breakthroughs lift your hands we are not done please we are out of time we have to hurry up please make sure you drop something make sure a seed leaves you hallelujah hallelujah keep the hands lifted the ushers will get to you but please there is somebody outside ah a mighty manifestation the spirit of poverty is being broken outside outside just lift your hands please i know we're out of time just give me one minute you don't need to bring the people outside just keep the, the hands lifted father whoever those people are let the fire of god locate them right now right now right now right now poverty be broken i cast that spirit i cast that spirit i cast that spirit hallelujah say the blessing of the lord is my inheritance say the blessing of the lord is my inheritance and through my giving I access that inheritance father now I'm praying for you now every limitation over anyone's life may that limitation fall now and every destiny helper that needs to come into your life to bring your life partner to bring your business partner to bring to connect you with graces in the name of Jesus we release them into your life hallelujah give Jesus praise Lord Jesus. give Jesus praise hallelujah let me make an altar call very quickly right now there are many of us here you have never given your heart to the Lord please listen inside and outside We've never truly made that commitment to Jesus. Some of us have given our hearts to the Lord, but we have found ourselves derailing. And tonight, God is calling you home. Wherever you are, please leave your seat and come right now. Celebrate them. They are coming. Celebrate them. Don't wait for anybody. Jump up on your feet and come. Outside, wherever you are, God is talking to you and saying you need to make your, your ways right with Jesus. Please come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't wait for anybody. Don't wait for anybody. Don't be ashamed. I know there are a number of people outside. Jesus is calling you to make your ways right. Jesus is calling you. Keep coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're out of time. Keep coming. Pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. Take my everything. Use me for your glory. Today, I make Jesus Lord of my life. I make up my mind to walk with the Spirit of God. I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. And I receive the grace of God to live a victorious Christian life. Father, I pray for these ones. Bless them. Anoint them. Use them. May their decisions last. May their decisions be true. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for making this decision. I'd like you to follow the usher. Follow the usher and he's going to lead you. Hallelujah. Now, while I take the announcement, if this is your first time of worshiping with us, I'd like you to leave your seat and just run out here. We want to bless and speak a word of prophecy over you. God bless you. We celebrate you. Outside, no matter how far you are, come. Come, encourage them, Koinonia encourage them thank you ma thank you sir come on koinonia this is not the best we are grateful people in this house we are grateful people he brought them by the finger of god hallelujah keep coming god bless you keep coming god bless you Thank you so much for 
making our time to come. Hallelujah. We honor you. We celebrate you. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. This is our miracle service. We are here every Friday and God is building us. We want to pray and prophesy into your life right now. I want you to believe it because you will see the hand of God. The Bible says, who has believed our report and to whom the hand of the Lord has been stretched. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Saints of God, stretch your hands and let's bless them. They came because they believed that God will step into their lives. Stretch your hands. We prophesy over every aspect of your life. God is coming through for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever challenge you came here with, we are assuring you that you will not return with it. We bless you with hunger for the things of God. We bless you with the spirit of prayer. We bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with love for God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you with the favor of God. You are like a well-watered garden. In the mighty name of Jesus, may you be mightily used of God. In Jesus' name. Thank you once again for coming. Please, I'd like you to follow the usher waving his hands. They'll have your details. They'll welcome you very briefly. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.